Hello, good evening everyone and welcome to the fifth session of Organic Home Gardening Webinar Series organized by Dilma Conservation. The series was organized following the success of previous series on organic home gardening. This time, however, you will receive a valuable certificate for your participation. There are seven sessions in this course and through the series, you will learn how to design your home garden, understand what crops to grow, how to prepare plants, beds, which fertilizers to use, managing pest and diseases, and conserve water. There are three types of certificates which will be awarded at the end of this webinar series based on your attendance and completion of any interactive assessments. Certificate of distinction will be awarded for the attendees who have participated in the webinar series, practice all the concepts and send photos of your work. Certificate of merit will be awarded for the attendees who have participated in the webinar series, practice some concepts and provided photo documentation of your work. Certificate of participation will be awarded for the attendees who have only participated in at least six sessions of this series. Please note that all participants must register with a working email address for the webinar series to be eligible for any of the certificates. Our resource person for the day is Mr. Anuradha Ranasinghe, who is an entrepreneur and agricultural consultant of EBA Agro Consultancy. I welcome you on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma uh, Conservation for today's session. If you have any questions related to today's session, you can simply put them in the Q&A tab, but please refrain from asking questions on the chat section of the webinar. During this webinar, there will be interesting poll questions and you are all welcome to give them a try to make this session more interesting and interactive. So, Anuradha, shall we start today's session? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Tarindu. Uh, hope uh, our today's session won't be interrupted by power cuts. So, I think uh, everybody will be able to join from the beginning to the end. So, uh, we received uh, some um, the interesting pictures from our participants because uh, they have actually uh, practiced what we have taught uh, during last. Uh, session. So very happy to uh, see the progress and uh, always uh, it's very, very encouraging for us also as the, as uh, participants who are doing these kinds of things. So uh, let's keep in touch and uh, definitely uh, uh, continue the work based on the lessons you learn. Definitely uh, you will be able to get a good uh, result uh, after practicing these uh, simple techniques. So today we are going to discuss about uh, simple organic inputs. So this is uh, pretty much a technical session because most of the time I will be explaining you to you how to prepare your, uh, uh, your own solutions and what are the organic fertilizers and different, uh, some knowledge about synthetic fertilizers and what, what is the difference of synthetic fertilizers and organic fertilizers. So these things we will be discussing. And uh, then I will be telling you uh, some techniques as well as uh, preparation of some insect repellents as well. So let's move forward. So if you take, uh, if you break down agriculture inputs, we can basically uh, uh, make it into two uh, segments, but I would like to include practices and techniques also as agriculture input because uh, uh, as farmers or as home gardeners. So we always need to follow up. Uh, we need to practice and we need to follow some techniques. Uh, other, than, other than that, uh, we need to provide inputs, but inputs only not uh, help you in uh, when uh, some problems happens at your garden. So always you need to be aware and you need to follow good practices. So if you take if we take agriculture inputs, we can uh, 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 categorize them as conventional inputs. That means 
inputs which uh, have been chemically synthesized uh, through laboratory or through uh, any other uh, chemical process. Uh, then, uh, excuse me, sorry about my bonk, uh, barking here. Uh, then uh, again, we can, uh, uh, there's another category, organic inputs. So those organic inputs basically made out from uh, natural material, uh, which we can find out uh, from our surrounding areas and uh, some minerals, that kind of things we can be used. Then, as I mentioned before, practices and techniques also uh, can be included as an input. So it's not tangible, but uh, it's also an input that what uh, I would like to uh, tell you at, uh, during this session. So if we take conventional inputs, uh, I think you are aware about fertilizers like the urea and more PTSP and blended. You will be using them as pellets like blue pellets or purple pellets, different kinds of uh, fertilizers are there. Then the pesticides and insecticides and fungicides, they're also commercially available. So if you are doing a large scale cultivation and if you are not preferred to do organic under organic farming conditions, so they are available. Most of the large scale conventional farmers, they use pesticides, insecticides, and all these fungicides when uh, they require. Then uh, there's another input, uh, herbicides. So they are basically to kill grasses or to control grasses. Then there can be uh, different plant uh, growth promoters like uh, flowering stimulators or rooting stimulators, uh, that kind of uh, plant growth growth promoters also available. So these are the four, basically these are the four types of conventional inputs we can uh, observe or we can see uh, in the open market or in the conventional uh, market. So I'm not going to tell too much about these things, but uh, good, to, good for you to know about is that uh, these kind of things are also available. And I will be explaining to you what are the, what are, what are the comparisons between uh, organic or uh, uh, chemical inputs. So, so organic uh, inputs can be uh, uh, categorized. So organic inputs can be uh, mentioned as fertilizers or soil amendment, like uh, compost, or I will be discussing later. So compost, these kind of things are soil am and amendments. Uh, so one, once we add the organic inputs, we can uh, improve the soil texture and soil uh, structure and, and the water, the porosity and water holding capacity. Uh, that's why we are telling, we are mentioning them as soil amendments because they help to uh, convert existing soil uh, into a next stage. That means it improves, always improves the soil. So it, it, we can consider like compost and all these kind of organic material like uh, as soil amendments. Then uh, there's another ca category called natural minerals. I will explain it to you. So we extract them directly from the ground, uh, from the earth, and we can directly apply them. So they are not considered as uh, synthetic fertilizers because we are not adding any value or we are not synthesizing anything, uh, uh, adding any chemical and we, it's not uh, coming through a synthesized process. Then uh, there's another uh, category in organic inputs. So they are insect repellents because most of uh, you will be interested to know about this, uh, these insect repellents because I know most of the home gardeners, so they have a lot of uh, issues, based, uh, especially with the pest uh, uh, like uh, caterpillars and different uh, insects. They are coming and uh, uh, eating leaves and they are damaging fruits and flowers. So uh, then we will be discussing about different insect repellents as well. Please move to the next slide. So before uh, moving, so let's do a small comparison. So what are the organic inputs and, and, uh, and what, are, what is the difference between organic and conventional inputs? So if we take conventional inputs, uh, they are very quick and uh, in responding because if we uh, put urea to a plant, or any uh, synthesized fertilizer, after uh, three to five days, uh, we can observe results uh, from the plants. 
but uh, if we put compost, so we cannot get that kind of uh, impact uh, within uh, three to five days. So cow dung or any poultry man or any uh, liquid organic fertilizer, it will take some time. So the response is slow, uh, but the conventional input uh, response is quicker. And uh, most of the in, uh, chemical, uh, conventional uh, agriculture inputs are specific. That means if we need to stimulate the root growth, then we can specifically increase the phosphorus content. Or if we need to uh, increase the leaf, uh, if our leaves are turning yellow, so if we apply nitrogen, high nitrogen fertilizer, uh, then we can uh, get the specific results. So the leaves will be green in greener within a uh, very shorter time period. So that's why conventional inputs are very quick and specific. But if we take organic inputs, uh, they are having a wide uh, range of uh, response. So that means uh, if we add cow dung to our, pl our plant, so it will give all the, all the types of nutrients in, to the plant, as well as it will improve the soil and as, uh, as an input, organic input. So they are giving a wide response. So if we uh, put a liquid uh, uh, fertilizer, sometimes because of that uh, bad order, uh, it can be work as a uh, insect repellent as well. So they are having a, uh, we are getting multiple uh, and wide responses once we use uh, organic inputs. So conventional inputs are very easy to apply so, and convenient to purchase. So if you go to the garden store, so you can, but not, I'm not uh, dis uh, think, uh, discussing about the current situation, but uh, they are easy to apply and uh, convenient to purchase. So it's available, those inputs are available, uh, commonly available in garden stores. But uh, if you take organic inputs, so we need to take some time because we cannot purchase. Now, slowly, some products are coming to the market, alternatives for conventional products. But uh, if we uh, take, uh, I will be uh, explaining to you some recipes, but uh, uh, if we need to make our own uh, liquid organic fertilizer, it's a little bit hard. It's not easier than going to the uh, garden store and uh, purchasing uh, required uh, uh, of chemical fertilizer, but it's hard to produce. And application procedures are also a little bit uh, complicated because we need to strain them and uh, we need to put into the spray and spray. So different uh, things are involved, but uh, different activities will are involved, but it's uh, very uh, uh, cost effective because we are not depending on anything uh, from the outside market. So you can prepare your own uh, uh, liquid or organic inputs and uh, on you have your own we can you can develop your own recipes so that's an uh, this, that's an advantage comparing with the conventional inputs then uh, conventional inputs again we need to put in a very uh, low uh, volume because if you you may have experienced some of you if you put a chemical fertilizer you need to put only half a teaspoon or quarter one yogurt spoon that amount of fertilizers for a small uh, container but if we uh, take uh, organic inputs, we need to add them as in a large volume. So if we are filling a, a container, so we need to add uh, topsoil or the organic matter and sand in equal uh, ratios. So likewise, a large quantity is required uh, when once we are uh, switching to organic uh, input application. Uh, then the most important thing is, so there are these uh, some of the especially pesticides and some fertilizers, residual impact has rec uh, recorded uh, through lab testing and a lot of uh, uh, scientific researches. But if we take uh, uh, organic inputs, the residual impact is very low comparing with the conventional agricultural inputs. So these are the basic uh, uh, differences between conventional and organic uh, uh, input application. So. That's why we always need to uh, encourage producing our own uh, inputs and uh, uh, use them because then we are not depending to uh, another market or we are not waiting to purchase them until uh, waiting to purchase or waiting to de de uh, get them delivered to a nearer store. So we are independent and we can produce our own. Next slide, please. So then uh, let's go into a bit uh, in detail uh, 
explanation on uh, organic uh, different types of organic fertilizers. So organic fertilizers can again we can uh, define into two uh, segments or two categories. One is organic fertilizers, other one is biofertilizers. So I will explain it to you also a little bit. So organic fertilizers. So if we take compost and different animal fertilizer or green manure. Wild sunflower, grilled cereal, what we collect from uh, our garden. So they are they comes in a solid form. So we can break uh, them into two categories, like solid uh, fertilizers as well as liquid fertilizer. So if we take liquid compost or wormy wash, or again uh, fish uh, tonic, I will explain it to you in uh, later. So these are uh, these kind of uh, fertilizers we can produce in a liquid form. So liquid form uh, fertilizers, we can spray to, uh, to the leaves and we can even pour to the roots on uh, of a plant. And the solid uh, based fertilizers, we can add uh, on top of the plant or we can mix it with the soil during the land preparation time. So then biofertilizers means, there, as you uh, sometimes you may know about this, there are nitrogen fixing bacteria. So phosphorus uh, fixing bacteria. Uh, in the natural environment. So they, uh, those uh, natural bacteria, so in all, all these natural organisms uh, were uh, selected and they can be mixed uh, into a media. So those kind of fertilizers, we call it as biofertilizers. So once we add biofertilizers, the process is uh, accelerated because the, we are uh, introducing uh, effect, uh, effective and we are introducing more selected uh, my, uh, uh, microorganism uh, uh, pool to a designated area to get the work done. This, that means uh, if we put a biofertilizer rich with nitrogen fixing bacteria, then when they go, go into the ground, definitely they will uh, work with the organic available organic material and they will fix nitrogen and uh, give uh, nitrogen to the plant. So the comparing with the organic fertilizers, biofertilizers are more uh, active and uh, more effective uh, because they are rich with natural uh, microbials as well. So they also can be uh, in uh, two med uh, mediums in solid form and liquid form. So uh, then uh, based on the form, we can apply them uh, on uh, uh, at our convenience. Next slide, please. Then uh, I think uh, there's a fall question coming. Up. Sorry. Yeah. So this is the first fall question of today's session. The question is about minerals or fertilizers. Can dolomite and sulfur be used as fertilizers? Yes, so no. Let's see the answers of the participants. Well, most of them think yes, dolomite and sulfur uh, can be used as fertilizers. So, rather, what is yes, your... So yeah, so let's discuss uh, in detail. So apart from uh, chemical fertilizers, synthetic fertilizers, and apart from organic fertilizers, as we discussed before, like animal fertilizer or compost or bio, green manure or biofertilizers, other than that, uh, we can use natural minerals like uh, dolomite, which is, uh, so if you take the available minerals in Sri Lanka, we have, uh, we have rock phosphate and uh, dolomite. So we extract them directly from the uh, so ground. So dolomite, rich with uh, magnesium and calcium. Rock phosphate uh, consists with uh, phosphorus. So these natural minerals, we can directly apply to our crops. So, and uh, some kind, uh, and sulfur. So sulfur means the pure sulfur, uh, not the, then from garden source, you can uh, purchase water soluble sulfur. So that is a synthetic fertilizer, a synthetic uh, chemical. But if we take the natural sulfur, again, we can use uh, them as an insecticide because it's coming in the natural form. So if you go to the Ayurvedic uh, 
uh, uh, traditional medicine uh, store, you can easily purchase sulfur. So you can uh, use it uh, uh, to nicely powder it and spray it, uh, it. So I will explain. So to your plants, for uh, thrips and mites and aphids. So uh, there are, so apart from the organic fertilizers and biofertilizers, so natural minerals like dolomite, rock phosphate, we can directly add uh, to uh, our uh, garden. So as a uh, organic fertilizer or a natural mineral. Okay, then uh, let's uh, discuss about uh, different uh, organic uh, input uh, preparation techniques. So this is the most uh, common uh, application or uh, the common uh, soil amendment is uh, the is compost. So composting, I, I think most of you as gardeners, you will be you may be doing it. Uh, comp uh, compost preparation. So we can uh, uh, do uh, composting in different ways. So one method is, this is the open method. I think, so, uh, can you move to the next slide, uh, please? Oh, no, previous, yeah. Not uh, in this uh, previous slide. So, okay, then we can prepare compost in different ways. So one is uh, the, the upland uh, uh, preparation method. So all the composting material, like uh, all the green uh, leaves which collected from your garden and uh, any other green manure and animal manure available, you can add them and we can you can make it as a heap and mm -hmm. cover it with a polythene. And after another one month, you can mix it. And after another month, you can mix it. Then after three months, that will be compost. So this is one, uh, this is the simplest method. If you have enough space in your garden, you can make it as a heap. So you can, uh, the, the length can be various according to the availability of the uh, space in your garden, but the width has to be one meter width and it can you can make it as a heap. So then you can best of, uh, way is to cover it using a polythene, uh, polythene because those the, all the nitrogen uh, elements, they are volatile and they can be exposed to the uh, yeah, and the compost uh, pile can be get dried. So that's why we need to cl uh, close it. And if it's getting too drier, time to time, we can spray some water and keep the moisture level. Then after uh, one month intervals, we can mix it. And uh, then uh, the composting process will be accelerated. So after three months uh, time, you can uh, use them. You can either sieve it or you can uh, dig pits and uh, add with the particles, uh, you can add them as a soil amendment. So uh, this is the uh, most common and uh, the simple techniques. Again, you can do, prepare this. If you have a, have a garden, you can make a pit and, uh, and add all this material and uh, prepare it. Then there's another system called bin system. So uh, you can purchase a, a compost uh, bin uh, from a, a there are many uh, producers in, 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 the, in the country. You can purchase a compost plastic or cement compost bin. Then you can uh, add all the garden material into the garden and kitchen waste and all these materials into that. And after uh, around two to three months, uh, three to four months time, you can get the uh, finished compost. So most important uh, thing is uh, in this compost preparation is the particle sizes should be very smaller. Then only the composting then the surface area is high uh, for uh, numerous bacteria to uh, work on it. So then the composting process will be uh, much faster uh, if you can break these particles into small pieces. So uh, if you are adding uh, tender branches to, to, to your compost pile, always please chop them and, uh, and break it into pieces. Uh, then your, the uh, composting process will be much faster. So if you're adding uh, banana trunks, it is very good uh, good source because it has more uh, potassium and it has more water. So it will keep your compost pile always uh, moist. Uh, but if you're adding uh, banana uh, uh, stem particles, always keep in your mind to break them uh, into at least uh, six inch, six inch uh, pieces. 
then the uh, and, and and again into make into slices because smaller particles uh, will be composted very uh, faster then uh, there's just there's another common problem which you always do you add some cooked food like the cooked rice or some curries or whatever the waste you add them into the your composting pile then uh, that will give you more unpleasant experiences because of the smells will be coming and uh, ants and the rats will be attracted so always uh, keep in in your mind don't put uh, cooked items like uh, waste food uh, into the uh, compost pile or compost bin or anywhere but uh, all the other uh, material like uh, the leftover vegetables or banana peels or any uh, fruit paste or any other uh, things you can add uh, add into the compost pile but uh, always please, uh, please try to avoid adding uh, cooked food and some uh, uh, left over of after getting the extracting the coconut milk uh, so those uh, things please uh, make sure not to add to the compost pile so this is the basic uh, uh, thing uh, compost pre preparation methods so upon uh, your space availability and uh, the time availability you can use and the amount of uh, organic material uh, collected in your garden so you can uh, pick a convenient method to prepare compost okay then uh, we can discuss about uh, different organic liquid fertilizers so i think most of you are uh, aware about uh, preparing uh, compost but these things uh, these liquid fertilizers also very important because the, these things will be coming in liquid mode and uh, it's uh, and uh, these are very uh, cost effective uh, cost and uh, very uh, effective because now if we take geomurta geomurta is a indian recipe so we use uh, fresh cow dung and gliceria uh, preparing uh, this i think uh, can you move turn to the next slide please No, uh, sorry, previous slide. Okay, uh, so is a very, uh, it's an Indian recipe. So we, we use, uh, we get fresh cow dung and gliceria to prepare this. So I will explain it to you how to make it. So if you, so this is the simple uh, uh, preparation technique. So we can uh, take this kind of, uh, so in your, in my left side, so the big can, it's the Jeevamurta. So we can add uh, five kilos of fresh cow dung uh, into the uh, into 200 liters of water or five to 10 or 15 uh, upon the availability then uh, 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 we need to add uh, around two to three kilos of uh, like uh, not the, the air, like air dried uh, glyceria leaves so then we can add it to that and uh, then we can add some jaggery so what we call the not the the kitul jaggery, but the commonly available brown sugar or uh, sugar cane jaggery, we can add it to it around 500 grams. So that will give a, a good media for the microbes to go. Then we can add some uh, untouched uh, soil. That, that means some uh, uh, brown or some de well decomposed soil. So as the inoculant or as the microbial uh, culture, to this uh, mixture and we can uh, stir it well so after stirring it uh, around one week so every day you need to stir it so this is an aerobic uh, process so the recipe is five, five to ten kilos of fresh cow dung two to three kilos of uh, glyceria and 500 grams of jaggery to 200 uh, liters of water then every if, if you have time it's better to mix it every morning and evening so up to seven days then uh, the, the, uh, while you are preparing, you can add some uh, soil uh, rich with uh, microorganism. That means a very dark brown soil uh, to this mixture. Then the microbes will expand uh, expand their growth uh, based on that uh, sugar media. So then, after one week's time, you will you can see if you stir it well, 
all the greenish area green leaves uh, will turn into white because all the chlorophylls and all the nutrients has gone into the media so then this media is very much rich with nitrogen so you can directly uh, uh, apply it to the soil so uh, especially you can take a small cup and uh, add it to add it uh, to your container uh, or a, a planting hall or any bed or else you can dilute it into 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 ratio and spray it to your uh, the uh, spray it to the plants so uh, for, as a foliage application so both ways uh, uh, we can add and uh, and uh, uh, thanks uh, mr ajit so cow urea also a very good source if we can able to uh, add this into this media so this is a very good uh, uh, substitute for urea so this is very much uh, rich with yeah, nitrogen so once i have experienced it after using this around uh, five to seven days we can see all the plants are getting a very uh, greenish color because of this high nitrogen content so this is uh, about gm water so same like uh, this we can prepare another uh, media, uh, organic liquid fertilizer like uh, name uh, fish liquid or fish tonic so all the uh, mostly the, the internal parts of uh, fresh fish we can again add it to a uh, add to a container. Again, we need to add some uh, uh, sugar media. Then again, we can stir it for a week. Then we will be getting very nice smelly. This is if we this, these all processes are aerobic process, not anaerobic process. So if we stir it well if, every morning and evening, if the fermentation and uh, uh, microbial activities happens uh, smoothly in this media. There won't be any uh, unpleasant orders. So same like this uh, uh, in the the previous geomurta. Uh, in this fish tonic also, we can do it really well. Uh, you taking all the internal material of fish and fish blood and add some water plus some uh, sugar. So and if we mix it every uh, every other uh, every morning or evening or at least one time a day. Well, around to one week to uh, two weeks, uh, you will be getting very nice, nice smelling uh, brown color syrup. So you can dilute it and apply it, uh, it to the uh, uh, plants. That's also this also having very high nitrogen content. So if you have uh, abandoned or not well yielding uh, brinjal cultivation, so if your leaves are very yellowish and not uh, flowering well. So you can apply this. Uh, this will give 100% uh, guaranteed results. To you. So it's uh, do it very simple techniques, especially the big fish you need to take, like uh, tuna or, or internal parts of a big fish, which is having a good uh, blood content. We can add it and uh, mix this syrup and uh, uh, apply to the plant after uh, dilution. At least uh, this all, if you are making all these things and if you're applying these uh, as folio applications, at least uh, try to uh, use uh, one to five ratio. Otherwise, if you add one to one or one to two, sometimes uh, these, uh, meet, uh, these all liquids are very strong. Sometimes they might burn leaves of your plants. So this is the second technique of preparing uh, fish liquid or what we call as fish tank. Then uh, this is another, uh, again, another, there's another very common, uh, application it fruit extract or we tell we name it as fruit tonic so all the waste fruit like uh, banana peels or uh, any other waste fruit or during jackfruit season jackfruit again you can uh, collect them into a uh, container again you need to add some uh, jaggery or brown sugar as a media then you can stir it well then you can take that extract and apply to uh, all their plants so this is also uh, very much uh, rich with potassium because of this, uh, the fruit content. So all the three recipes are same. Uh, preparation techniques are same. Uh, only, only thing, Jeeva uh, Murta, we add uh, uh, some soil mixture because we get, uh, we try to uh, grow natural uh, soil microbiomes in, uh, in this media. That's why we add it and uh, 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 stir it. Uh, other than that, 
all the three recipes are same and the process is aerobic so that's not an error so if the process become if the availability of air is less for all these uh, microbes then only uh, unpleasant orders will happen so if you mix it well and if you add sufficient amount of uh, sugar media to these uh, cultures or these uh, preparations there won't be any unpleasant orders so uh, please try uh, at, at your home garden so and uh, these uh, liquid fertilizers give you uh, will give you very good results uh, after application yeah and then uh, other than that so uh, we can uh, grow green manure in our gardens like glycerea so this is uh, wild sunflower so time to time we can cut these uh, branches and uh, we can uh, add to uh, uh, our compost pile or we can add, uh, chop these, these things and add them as a mulch so or we, again we can dig the pit and uh, bury them uh, on the ground and on the as uh, in a fresh mold so the important thing is uh, this uh, the these all these types of green manure having high nitrogen content at the early stage so if you let uh, these uh, plants grow and uh, and uh, let their stems to be more matured and they, the stems get uh, more browner or uh, more harder then the nutrient contents will be get uh, reduced so always try to uh, add them to your, your soil media or add them to your compost at the tender uh, mode. That means before they are getting too much mature. So that's the uh, secret of application of green manure. And this material also having very good uh, uh, nitrogen. So then nitrogen can be uh, operated. So if you add this, uh, uh, add them uh, as green manures, make sure to uh, once you add it to the soil try to uh, toss it with some uh, uh, soil uh, to uh, prevent evaporation of uh, nitrogen okay these are the uh, some uh, organic uh, inputs uh, what we can uh, consider that organic fertilizer then the other thing is organic uh, Best uh, repellent. So we are not uh, uh, telling them as um, organic pesticides because these are uh, mostly these are repellent because they keep uh, they keep pest away from our plants and mostly they most of the time they don't kill the pest. So they uh, these all these uh, uh, solutions they create unpleasant environment uh, to the uh, to the uh, insects or any uh, any other pests. So because of the the bad odors or because of some uh, uh, some chemical compounds, uh, they they will keep pests away. Or sometimes uh, some of these solutions will uh, create a barrier on on the leaf surfaces. So then the uh, the caterpillars or then the other insects they won't prefer that smell or that uh, taste. So that's the that's why we are telling uh, mentioning them as uh, insect repellents without or mentioning as uh, pesticides. So there are different uh, preparations are there, and there are no uh, strict regulations or strict strict recipes preparing all these kind of uh, uh, repellent. So you can take you now the common repellent is uh, uh, five leaves extract. So we can take uh, glyceria, wild sunflowers, or different whatever the uh, capetia or different uh, uh, lantana, different uh, leaves available. Nika. So I'm not very familiar with the English terms of these names, but uh, based on the availability, you can try uh, around five, six, seven leaves, and you can add them to uh, into a. Uh, you can dip them in a hot uh, water, or you can let them to. Uh, decompost in a water water medium then you can strain it and uh, spray it to your uh, plants so those because of these uh, natural chemical compounds uh, exist in this media uh, they will keep uh, spaced away so leaf extract is a very common uh, uh, preparation in organic home garden then again neem seeds so that's also a very good uh, uh, 
uh, insect repellent and it's a good uh, uh, insecticide as well for especially for uh, caterpillars so uh, you need you can collect uh, neem seeds during the uh, august uh, september season of the year so that's the uh, neem uh, fruiting season then you can keep uh, uh, keep them at your home and time to time you can break uh, these seeds uh, and soak it in the water around 48 hours then you can uh, strain it and directly apply to uh, your plants and this is a very good uh, uh, solution for caterpillars basically uh, leaf feeding caterpillars uh, then apart from that we can use different plant extracts so ginger garlic uh, gentili uh, then tobacco there are different uh, plant varieties uh, they are having different uh, uh, chemical properties so you can extract them or you can uh, squeeze them and get the sap and uh, dilute it and spray it or you can uh, 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 like uh, the you can dip and uh, make solutions and uh, do it and you can uh, use three four solutions to make this uh, uh, extract so you can add uh, mix it ginger and chili and uh, spray it so there are no hard and fast rules so different different plant extracts you can use and uh, then other than that uh, you can grow marigolds in your garden so marigolds keep uh, especially if you are growing chili if you can plant at least one or two uh, uh, marigold plants in between your chili so there that 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 uh, the fragrance and that this, that smell comes from the marigold plant will keep your uh, especially uh, mites away uh, in chili so those are the different plant extracts uh, we can use uh, uh, during our home garden yeah then uh, this is another common uh, though we discuss about pests and now again sometimes very common disease happens into your garden uh, we call it uh, at as damping off so i will discuss all these diseases and solutions during the uh, final session on pest and disease management but uh, so especially nurseries uh, your small nurseries uh, seedlings might be get wilted suddenly so that's because because of the root based get uh, rotten uh, that that is the uh, the disease is uh, damping off it's uh, spreading because of a, a bacteria or, or, or a combination of bacteria and fungus so and sometimes your plants might get uh, powdery uh, like a rust or dust especially in cucumbers you will be observing it so we call it as powdery mildew mildew or downy mildew or different uh, uh fungal or bacteria related uh diseases are happening so we can use this border mixture uh, as a very good uh, organic uh, 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 fungicide so this we can prepare this with equal amounts of lime so what lime means uh, lime which we are which we use to uh, to be to with beetle and uh, with uh, copper sulfate so copper sulfate commonly known as palmanicum so you can uh, purchase it uh, from a, a, a that uh, traditional medicine store so equal amount of let's, let's say if we take 10 grams of uh, lime then we need to take 10 grams of copper sulfate okay then we can add uh, it to uh, we should not mix it together so we can add 10 liters of water with 10 grams of lime and 10 liters of water with 10 grams of uh, copper sulfate. Then you can mix them separately. And before you spray it, you can collect them together. Then you will get this kind of a very nice blue color uh, solution. Then after mixing, immediately you need to uh, spray it. Otherwise, this copper and calcium, uh, calcium sulfate and copper, calcium carbonate and copper sulfate react and uh, copper. Uh, will be deposited and calcium will be deposited on the, the container. So the recipe is equal amount of calcium sulfate or lime plus equal amount of calcium hydroxide or lime plus equal amount of copper sulfate or palmanica. Let's say 10 gram and 10 gram, we can add into 10 liters of water, uh, five, uh, take uh, five liters of 
uh, lime solution and again 5 liters of copper sulfate solution and mix it together. Then you will get 10 liters. Then you can directly uh, spray it uh, to your plant as a good fungicide. So, or else, if you are getting a lot of fungal, especially like your nurseries are getting damping off, you can mix uh, without even adding copper sul uh, sulfate or palmanicum, you can make a lime solution and uh, spray it uh, to your plants. So, this will give you good results. And make sure you want uh, preparing a very thick uh, solution. These solutions should be very light solutions, otherwise, the leaves can be uh, get burned. So I think, uh, yeah. Then uh, there are different uh, soil amendments also there. We can uh, consider as uh, organic inputs. So biochar, I think your next lecture will be uh, on biochar uh, and the very uh, ex uh, high level expert from uh, Dilma Conservation, he'll be doing the next one uh, on uh, biochar preparation and it's very useful session. So other than that, I'm not going to talk too much into Bayesha as you will be getting that, uh, that knowledge on the next session. So we can prepare vermicompost. So vermicompost, another method. So if you see this picture, it's a simple technique, uh, preparing of vermicompost. So we, you can take this kind of a container and put some nutrient uh, media. That means uh, composting uh, some cow dung and some uh, uh, dry, uh, half pay composted leaves and some stop soil and prepare this media and you can add some earthworms into this container. Then uh, you can hang a pot on top of it and time to time slowly one dip by uh, small drip by drip uh, the water will be collected uh, and uh, collected to the uh, added to the this container. Then there's a tap at the bottom so after another one week time you can get uh, so you need to have a small base on the this uh, container, uh, 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 like a strainer, then all the water will be collected at the bottom. Then time to time you can get this vermi wash, and time to time uh, you can dilute it and spray it to a garden. Uh, this is the liquid of vermi wash preparation. Other than that, you can add earthworms to your compost pile, and uh, it has to be aerated and should not be waterlogged. Uh, otherwise, worms will get die. Uh, and that kind of a media also, uh, you can add to your plants. Then uh, there's a special uh, technology called effective microorganism technology, EM technology as commonly known as EM. So that's a selected uh, microbial media. So you can purchase it, it's a Japanese technology and you can purchase that solution from the market. Then you can uh, spray it into your, uh, uh, plants or you can add it to your compost piles or you can add it to your, the soil media. So that is rich with uh, natural microorganisms. Then they will go into the uh, soil and they will uh, work as biofertilizers and they will give very good uh, results uh, after uh, doing uh, the microbial process uh, on the soil media. And the Bokasha is another different technique, uh, uh, preparing uh, technique. Uh, with some uh, uh, rice. Uh, it's another microbial uh, culture preparation uh, with some uh, natural microbes and some uh, old rice and we keep them into ferment and we take that extract and we can apply to the garden, uh, uh, our plants. Then uh, cocoa peat or coir dust, what we call naturally as kohubat uh, in Sinhala. So we can add them to the soil as soil amendment. So those are different types of soil amendments we can use as uh, simple organic inputs to enrich your uh, soil and enrich the growing media. Then, uh, again, uh, we need to discuss uh, about uh, nature of uh, organic inputs. So these all these uh, organic it, inputs are raw, slow responsive. So don't expect any result after immediately after spraying or applying this uh, kind of any input. Uh, don't expect some no results uh, comparing with the chemical inputs because uh, they will get uh, uh, some uh, longer duration to uh, give the expected results. They are very effective. Some insect uh, uh, insect repellents are, might give you quick results, but 
other than that other organic inputs are or the fertilizers and other uh, types are uh, slow responsive and uh, as i mentioned before there are multifunctional yeast that means if you prepare jeeva murtha and apply to your plants that will give you nitrogen as and sometimes that will react as a active uh, that will work that will work as a uh, insect uh, repellent as well because of the uh, the this the the fragrance and because of this uh, uh, some uh, chemical properties uh, in the, in the media so uh, that's the uh, uh, good uh, good thing in application of organic fertilizers sometimes they will work as a fertilizer and sometimes at the same time they will work as a insect repellent then uh, there is a most important thing is a uh, low uh, consistency so if you take batch by batch because you will be doing it so you will be doing the uh, you will be sorry so the other important thing is uh, on uh, about uh, uh, organic inputs is a uh, low consistency because if you prepare a solution during this day and uh, one batch and if you prepare another batch during next time Uh, there can be uh, variable factors that means the ingredients uh, and the preparation techniques can be varies time to time so the consistency is very low that's the real challenge in uh, organic prep uh, input preparation uh, because if we take urea we know okay nitrogen percentage is uh, exactly 46% but if we prepare another organic compost based on the materials and ingredients uh, Uh, the nitrogen contents and other nutrient contents can be varies so the law consistent especially in the uh, in uh, pre preparing uh, liquid solutions also uh, this law cons consistency is a uh, big problem because we don't get expected result all the times sometimes uh, the results can be changes and the recipes also can be changes and the application method can also can be changed because of this uh, law consistency and uh, another advantage is they, these things are very flexible so previous like this these uh, techniques are very flexible because if you if we cannot find the uh, cereal leaves we can add wild sunflower leaves uh, so ingredient requirements are always very uh, flexible so upon uh, based on the available material in your surrounding area you can add them and uh, you can uh, 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 change them and uh, you can uh, alter them so uh, that's the uh, one important thing and the application ratios so application ratios you need to with your experience you need to try and find out a convenient uh, application uh, ratios because uh, always start, start with high dilution because if you add the 1 to 1 sometimes your leaves will be get burned so always try at least start with 1 to 4 1 to 5 and try and try out and uh, find out a good uh, application ratio and good uh, dilution ratio uh, then and most of the time it's better if you can add them without applying them as foliage application it's better if you can prepare them as uh, especially liquid fertilizers you can prepare them as in a liquid uh, as solutions and you can take a small cup and add them to the uh, add them to the root uh, root or so on or soil media then uh, differ, uh, the unnecessary problems won't happen if not uh, if you prepare you always try to prepare find out your own application ratio that's the most uh, convenient way because you know as you prepare you you with the experience you will get to know okay this uh, ratio will be not effective this will be effective and not, this will not harm uh, my plants okay so next uh, i would like to uh, discuss about some practices uh, and usage of appropriate technology so this is this is a insect trap so i i captured in batalego rice research institute uh, during exhibition so when i went there so this is a light trap so all the uh, paddy bugs will be uh, attracted to this light and uh, they will be trapped uh, to this bottle uh, uh, through this uh, come to this funnel and they will trap to this bottle 
So this is uh, another pitcher irrigation system. So this, uh, that means they, they keep a pot here and uh, they bring a choir up, up, uh, up to here. Then the pot will be filled and there's a small hole bottom at the bottom of the, uh, the pot. Uh, then, then this choir rope will bring water uh, uh, as a drip line uh, through the soil media. So these are different techniques which we can use, simple techniques as organic input. So one important thing is uh, a pest or disease, they won't come and attack uh, your plants overnight. So they will, uh, if we take a butterfly will come and they lay, they lay eggs and the, then the caterpillar will come, then the, the caterpillar will start eating and slowly, slowly increasing the dolls. And after one week time, your plant will be uh, uh, fully attacked. So frequent observation is important. So always, because uh, uh, prevention is better. So always try to uh, uh, visit your garden and uh, try to train your eye for smaller, smaller changes in your garden. So if you suddenly notice uh, your chili plants got leaves, if one chili plant got uh, leaves of one chili plant got curled comparing with the other, that's how you need to train your eye. So then you can find out, okay, this is the disease or this is the pest attack. So that's the most important thing uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, input preparation. Before preparation, you can find out the problem. Then because we are using organic input, so that uh, required time period for control, especially the pest and diseases might be lengthier than comparing with the uh, conventional inputs. Uh, then we, you need to control the environment also, uh, especially light and water. Uh, then uh, you can avoid uh, uh, alter your uh, requirement of the organic inputs. So uh, if you can control uh, more uh, water level, uh, control the water, or if you can uh, uh, drainage the surplus water, then uh, that will help you to uh, 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 improve the texture of your soil. Then time commitment also very important uh, because you need to spend some time in your garden. Otherwise, uh, whatever inputs available, that won't work uh, because inputs can't do only up to a certain level. But you have to do a lot uh, to get the work done uh, uh, in your garden. Okay, then uh, you can use simple techniques as I mentioned here. I think uh, we discussed all these things and uh, finally, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, in organic inputs, uh, prevention is almost uh, uh, better than cure and uh, always try to balance the natural ecosystem and organic uh, farming is a practice, not uh, is a system and a practice, so we cannot uh, do changes overnight. Over to you, Tarindu. Yes, Anurag. So we have come to the end of today's session. And before we wind up, there are a few announcements. All the participants who have registered will receive the feedback form one day after the webinar session. And please be sure to uh, fill and submit the form. I would like to thank you, Mr. Anurag, on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for sharing most amazing information and for your valuable time. Uh, with us today and yes thank you to all participants for joining us today and hopefully the next webinar for the organic home gardening webinar series will be on simple organic inputs by Ota on the 5th of April 2022. If your questions were not answered today, don't worry all your questions for today's webinar will be answered through an email. Okay, now uh, with that, it is time to conclude our webinar for the day and have a good day. Be safe. <laughs>